Hello, and welcome to a big reactor tutorial. Today, I'll be looking at the constituent parts of big reactors, uh, especially at the Eulorium reactors. So, let's jump right into it. Alrighty, to start off, we have the reactor casing. This is the main structure block that's used in reactor, and it's used for the frame. Now, a frame can vary in different sizes, but it looks somewhat like this. Kind of just the outside portion. Yeah, you get the point, it goes all around the sides. So that's the frame. Keep in mind that these can be used for this, all of the sides, the reactor casings, but generally people only use them for the, um, for the outline of it. Alright, so, onto the glass. This is a uh, structural block as well, but it's used just for the sides, uh, the top and the bottom. Um, it can't be used for the outer edges, outer edges, i.e. where the frame goes, because uh, obviously that doesn't really work and it wouldn't look good either. So that's used just for the top, the bottom and the sides as well. Keep in mind that these reactor casings can be used on the bottom, top and sides as well. Alrighty, the Eulorium fuel rod. This provides a space for the fuel to be uh, burned within the reactor, and for each one of these Eulorium fuel rods, there is a capacity of 4,000 millibuckets, otherwise known as four ingots. And these can only be placed inside the reactor, so within the, the shell, the casing of it. Um, but they also must be in columns reaching from the reactor floor to the roof. Alrighty, so the reactor controller. This is the uh, central hub or the command block of the, and it also provides interface for the reactor and the control point for it. So all of the reactors require at least one, well obviously, and they can only be placed on the vertical faces, so the sides of it. And uh, when it's assembled, this little screen tab black thing here will turn red, and then when it's uh, the reactor is active or it's on, it will turn green. That's pretty cool. So. The control rod. This uh, defines an active fuel column within a reactor, so a stack of these must have one of these on top for it to be for it to be a complete Eulorium stack, fuel rod stack. And uh, beneath it must be a column of fuel rods, obviously. But it provides radiation mo uh, radiation moderating control rod, which can be extended or retracted from the fuel. So basically, if we have a look inside the interface, you can see it's got these two insert and retract rods. So if I insert the rod, you can see it puts it in further, but if I retract it, then it takes it out. So basically this control rod controls how radioactive the fuel rod is and how much power it can produce, things like that. So the further it is in, it becomes less reactive and generates less heat, therefore generating less power. Reactor power tap. This is one of the more key parts of the reactor as it provides a connection between a reactor and a power network, i.e. RF cables or even things like the Billcraft kinesis pipes. So RF is also the thermal expansion pipes by the way, like the conduits and things like that. So you can have multiple of these reactor taps in one reactor, but if you do then the power will be split evenly between the uh, different power outputs, which is good because that means you don't have to separate them out later on. Alrighty, so the access port. This provides the interface for inserting and removing the fuel and also the waste from the rea reactor. The two main input. There are two main modes: input and output. The input will take items from the connected pipe, and output will put them into the pipe. And also, it will automatically eject the waste and intake the fuel. By the way, you can make it automatically eject the waste by when you go into the reactor chamber. The reactor controller is a little button that says automatically eject. So, if we take a look inside this interface, you can see we've got eject waste, eject fuel, inlet mode, and outlet mode. So at the moment it's on inlet mode, as you can see there's these arrows pointing inwards. If I switch it to outlet mode, they point upwards. That's pretty cool. Generally people have two of these on a reactor, one for the waste and one for putting in the fuel. So, redstone port. This is used to monitor a reactor remotely, and but it can only be placed on the sides of the reactor. So the same as the uh, reactor controller, it can only be on the sides. Um, but it can be figured, configured via the interface. As you can see, if we take a look inside, it's got multiple different types of uh, options for you. For example, the energy amounts, um, control rod insertion, the reactor on and off, heat temperatures, and fuel and waste monitoring. So this can either listen for a redstone input, or 
it can emit its own redstone output, but it can't do both of those at the same time. So usually you have two of these set up with a redstone signal between them. Alrighty, cyanide reprocessor. This is a machine in itself, and as you can see if we take a look inside, it's got a slot for water, one for energy, an input, an output, and some phases over here we can configure for different inputs and outputs. Red being input, green being output, blue being for water, and the normal being for power. Okay, so it's used to reprocess the cyanide, which is the waste from a reactor, and it has a storage for 1,000 Minecraft joules, and a slot through which, need, through which it can process two ingots of waste into one plutonium ingot. Plutonium being the uh, refined cyanide, which you can also use back in the reactor and then produce lucrodite afterwards. That's pretty cool. So, when you do go through this processing stage, it requires a 1000 millibuckets of water and also 100 Minecraft joules of energy. The interface allows for the changing of the faces and the inputs and outputs. As I showed you before, it's got those inputs and outputs on the side here that you can change around. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So now that we know about the blocks, we need to know about the fuels and the waste and products. So there's two main fuels in this mod. Uranium from the Industrial Class Classic mod and Eulorium from Big Reactors. Both of these are exactly the same and are viewed by the mod as the exactly, basically the exact same item. So you can use either one of these and it will still run on the reactor. Alrighty, so the uh, waste from the reactor comes out as cyanide. That's this ingot right here. So when you reprocess it, it becomes plutonium. That's this one here. And then when you put this back into reactor and use it, the output of this is lucrodite, which is pretty cool. Alrighty, so let's make our own reactor. Let's get the uh, reactor casing, glass, fuel rod, controller, uh, control rod, power tap, uh, access port, and I'll come back to these later. Alrighty, so let's start off with building our casing. So if we just, I'm going to make mine with a uh, three by three area on each side. So I'll just build these out like so. Boop. And pull this up, branch that across like so. As you can see, I've got plenty of space for other the other components and things for the reactor, which is good because I'll be explaining quite a few things today. So there we go. We've got our casing, the outside. Now, let's put it on the inside. So we've got the reactor glass. So I could fill up these sides. Remember, we can fill the sides, the bottom and the top. But I'm not going to worry about the bottom since we won't be viewing it from the base. So I'm just going to fill it up with the casing. So let's fill in the sides with this reactor glass, like so. Boop, boop, boop. And that's done. Okay, so this is where I'm going to put my reactor controller. Remember, it has to be on one of these sides, one of the open sides of the reactor. Now I'm just going to fill in the rest of it with some of the reactor glass. Alrighty, so now the Eulorian fuel rods. Now there's several ways you can do this. You can have it in stacks of four like this. You can have them like this. Or fives. You can have them in singles. You can have them in any configuration basically. But for the moment I'm just going to have them set in this five by this five spray pattern sort of thing. So I'm going to stick those out like that. Remember, on top of each one of these rods, we need to have the uh, control rod. So, I'm going to stick these on top of each one of these. And now they're completed uh, reactor fuel rod cells. So, as you can see on the inside, we've got these kind of funny gaps in here. You might be wondering what we put in there. Well, this is what you can, where you can put metals such as copper, diamond, or graphite uh, to disperse the heat to the casing. So that the core remains efficient, but at a lower temperature. So it's still really good to put these in. Sometimes people don't do it, but it is really helpful and it does improve your efficiency a lot. Now, the most common thing to use is diamond blocks as they have the highest uh, value for heat radiation, uh, heat dispersion. So as I'll, you'll see here, I'll just stack these up with some diamond blocks. Now, as I said before, you can use some graphite, some copper, iron, any of those sort of blocks. So boom, those are done there. Alrighty, now I'm just going to cap it off with these reactor glasses like so, boom. And you'll see, you see it's changed the outside casing, the texture for it. That means you've created a reactor. And now that that black little interface has turned to the red, and now we have this panel. 
But before we take a look into that, let's just have a look at some access ports. One there and one there. For this first one, I'm going to leave it as the input mode. But for the second one, I'm going to put this as output mode, as this is going to where, be where I output all of the uh, waste. So, since we have that, let's move on to the power tab. I'm only going to put one in for today, but you can put more if you like, as I said before. So that's into there. Alrighty. Since we have our uh, outputs and inputs set up, let's find a way of putting items in and taking them out. You can use logistics pipes, as I showed in the last tutorial on how to use those, but for this tutorial I'm just going to use some build craft pipes, just to make it simple and easier. So if we type in pipe, I'm going to get some golden transport pipe, some wooden pipe, and I'm also going to get some emerald transport pipe, I'm going to get some redstone torches, and some redstone engines as well. Boom. So, actually, also I'll grab a crystal chest. So, we'll have our input slot here and our output here. So for our input, what we need is our wooden transport pipe. Going up to this input slot, remember we set this so that it has inlet mode. And now for this, this can be our outlet. So, we'll set this up like so. Now it's all good to go. So, put this redstone engine down for it, and now, well, what are we going to use for the input into the reactor? Well, for today, I'm just going to use some eulorium. So, I'm going to stick those into there, and I'm going to get a redstone torch, and start inputting those into the reactor. As you can see, they're going through, and once they reach this golden pipe, they go up a bit faster, and now they're in. As you can see, since there's some eulorium in there, those fuel rods are starting to fill up. And so, you can see inside, if we take a look inside the interface, you can see that the core fuel status is gaining some fuel. Now it's only 5% fuel, now it's 6.7, but it's slowly, slowly gained more. As you can see, there's multiple slots. There's the energy buffer, core heat, casing heat, and this core fuel status. Energy buffer just shows you how much is stored in there. Core heat is the fuel rods in the diamond blocks in the center, how hot they are. The casing heat is this outside. And also down the bottom we have do not auto eject waste and auto eject waste. We want auto eject waste as we want it to send out the waste and into this. Pretty cool. So we're not going to turn it on for the moment as we want to set up our power out. So let's grab ourselves some kinesis pipes. I'm going to grab some emerald and some diamond. Now I'm going to grab a uh, big flux generator and a medium flux generator. This will be for a big electric flux generator. This will be for a bit later, but anyway. So for our power storage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the RF into EU. So doing this, I'm going to get a some transformers. I'm going to get some EV, HV, and MV. I don't think the EV are that necessary, but I still like to have them just in case. So, let's have our big flux generators, like so. As you can see, it's connected. Then we'll have our EV transformer, and then our HV, and our MV. Now, I'm just going to store the power in a uh, MFE today. So, I'll grab one of those and stick it just here. Alrighty, so now that we have this, we've got our power set up. So, let's turn our reactor on and see how it works. If we go into the interface, you can see it's 100% full now. Activate our reactor and you can see the heat goes up and the energy goes up too. So, now it's producing energy. As we can see, it's taking out through here, sending it through these and storing it in the MFE. So, that's pretty cool. Alrighty, now I'm going to move on to the redstone port. Now this, as we learnt before, is quite cool for remotely controlling a reactor. In this case, I'm going to stick it on the back side here, with one there, and another one there. And to connect these, I'm just going to get some redstone, and you can use any block, I'm just going to use iron just to as a support block for the redstone. 
So if we connect these two up and I access the instant interface, remember we have looked in here we had a look in here before and there's multiple options. So I guess we could go that energy amount. So we could say if it's 75% and it's active while above that, if it has more than 75% energy, then we can say to turn off the reactor. But since it doesn't have 75% energy at the moment, it's going to turn it off. So that's pretty cool. So instead of that, I'm going to change it so that if it's below, it activates the reactor. And now, as you see, it's activating and it's going up. That's just one option. Let's have a look at some other ones. For example, the control rod insertion. So while the reactor's on, I could say insert it 10%. So boom, when I do that, as you can see, if we go up here, it's put all of these at 10%. So you've got lots of different options for controlling the reactor and doing things like that. For the moment, I'm just gonna leave it as this. And yeah, so I'm just gonna take these out of here because I want maximum efficiency at the moment just for this tutorial. Alrighty. So now that we understand the redstone port, let's move on to the cyanite reprocessor. As you can see over here, I have a uh, water source and I've got this water pump pipe. Basically, it's just a smaller version of the uh, pump, the Billcraft pump. So if we put our cyanite repros reprocessor up just here, let's get, let's sort out the interfaces first. So I want my input to be on the top and my output to be on the bottom. Remember input is red, output is green. And I want my fluid, my blue input for water to be on the side. I'm gonna leave my uh, power input on the other side. So for this, let's get some uh, crystal chests some pipe in this case i'm going to get some golden transport some wooden transport pipes some diamond kinesis emerald kinesis and some golden fluid pipes so we've got our input here and our output just over here as you remember our input is on the top so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take an output for this chest and bring it all the way up to the top here like so and then I'm going to take an output from the bottom and put it into the crystal chest, like so. So, let's grab our water pipe and stick that along here and put it into the side. As you can see, it's filling up with water now, so we know that we've set it up correctly. So now for these diamond kinesis pipes. You might be wondering why I kept this big flux generator. Well, that's because I wanted to take the power out of this MFE that we've been generating and put it into the other, into the reprocessor, so we can reprocess, reprocess some of the stuff that we had in there before. So I'm gonna take an emerald kinesis pipe and then run a diamond kinesis pipe all the way along here and up to this, boom. As you can see, it's taken power out and dumped it into here. Now it has 100% of the energy, so that's pretty cool. So let's get ourselves um, redstone torches and some engines. Just stick that there like so. If we grab some cyanide, as this is the reactor output, remember the waste, and we can reprocess it. So we'll stick that into here, and if we power that on, now it'll take the cyanide out of here and put it into this. Now remember before, it required two of those cyanide ingots, uh, 1,000 millibuckets of water, and 100 micrograph joules of energy. As you can see, when there's two in there, it'll process them. It takes a little bit of time, but it does. And it should output any moment now. And we'll see it pop through there. Yep, there it goes. Plutonium ingot. There we go. That's our reprocessed ingots of cyanide. So now we have plutonium. You can put these back into the reactor. And these would work the same way as the eulorium. You can put those in. And then you would get lucridite out afterwards. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Alrighty, well, I hope you learned something from this tutorial today, and I'll catch you guys soon. Have a good one.